Uh, so welcome. Um, I hope you guys are having a good EnvoyCon and beginning of KubeCon. Um, so we're already starting a little bit late, so I'm going to try and rush through this, uh, see if we can get to the meat of this uh, a little quickly. So um, my name is Casey Kurosawa. Uh, I'm a support engineer or solutions engineer with uh, Ambassador Labs. Um, and we're going to be talking about Envoy debug logging. Um, so I started my journey with uh, Envoy um, a little more than a year ago, uh, starting working with the uh, now Emissary project um, and working with clients and customers uh, using our products and trying to figure out problems that they're having. And, you know, the default Envoy logs that, that come with uh, the, the, the system are, are quite helpful and, you know, very useful, but sometimes you want to dig a little bit deeper. Um, but once you turn on that debug logging mode, uh, you get flooded with a sudden massive wall of text, right? Uh, once, you, once you take a look at it, it's a lot to take in. Um, it's very overwhelming at first, and sometimes things aren't even necessarily in the order that you're expecting them, of course, because because Envoy is a multi-threaded process and is able to handle simultaneous requests. Um, so getting an understanding of the overall architecture of how the logs are structured uh, can help us follow requests. So let's break it down and start one line at a time here. Uh, looking at each individual aspect, we have uh, the timestamp, um, which is pretty straightforward. We have the worker PID that's associated with a particular log line. Um, we also have the log level, the component that is associated with it. Uh, and so this could be maybe a, a filter component or routing component. You're most likely going to find um, you know, these kinds of these kinds of uh, this kind of information here. You're also going to get the code source of where uh, this particular action is taking place. And then the two pieces that I find the most useful are the connection ID and the stream ID. Uh, and now by utilizing both the timestamp and the stream ID, we're able to identify a particular set of, um, of information uh, about a request as it's passing through the data plane, the Envoy data plane. Um, and then finally, we can tie that request information to a particular action that takes place. So now let's actually follow an example connection. Uh, as it passes through Envoy. So first we have the initial handshake. You can see as part of our logs here that uh, we start out with an initial TLS handshake. Uh, it provides us the uh, server name that was requested by the client. And we can see that after accepting that handshake, it initiates a new connection. Now, after the con connection has been established, <laughs> And we can see the particular connection ID is C2988. Uh, it establishes a new stream and processes the headers. Uh, now, a couple of interesting things to note here. Uh, the first, of course, is that uh, we're utilizing our HTTP2 pseudo headers here. So um, any kind of identification of the, the host header is going to be part of that authority uh, pseudo header as you're looking at it. Um, the other thing is that you're going to also see a number of the um, various user agent and information that's being populated by the browser as well. And this can be another good way of identifying a particular request that you want to take a look at. Uh, and so at this point, uh, we can now establish that that's the uh, initial request that has come in, and it has been processed, and we get the header information that's associated with it. And now, because our proxy is utilizing the XDOT filter, we're going to take a short sidetrack here. And this is going to be the case for most uh, filter, filters, Envoy filters that you have um, associated with your Envoy instance. Um, so in this particular case, we have an upstream XDOT at localhost port 8500. Uh, and it's doing a post request. And we can see that it is able to uh, send the contents of 
the request and get an authorization response back. Uh, and you can also notice that it actually establishes a completely separate connection here uh, with a completely separate stream ID. And so this kind of gives you proof uh, in the actual logs that you know this is an actual uh, synchronous process that, that is happening uh, separately to what's happening with your um, uh, re request connection. And so now that we've established that this is uh, authorized as part of our XDoth, um, we can now construct the proxied request that is intended for the upstream. And you can see that um, this will be the final contents of the request as it gets passed to the upstream cluster. Um, including all kinds of uh, header modifications. Um, you notice that we get our X Envoy uh, headers automatically attached as well. And so those can be inspected to see how those are interacting with the system, um, as well as some information if you were to look at the actual cluster um, in something like XDS, uh, you can see which specific upstream cluster is being matched for the particular URL and for what um, information. And now finally, uh, Envoy will actually construct a new connection, um, typically the, the use, using the number following uh, the initial request, and is able to establish a new connection to a, this upstream um, and re receives a response back that it then returns to the original client. And after the response is complete, and it is established that it has finished uh, sending this 200 response code, uh, we see that it destroys the stream and uh, completes the connection. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much about it. So as as kind of a general idea, and and the final takeaways here is is that um, by understanding how to read the debug, debug logs, and in particular, how to associate these particular uh, connection IDs and stream IDs, um, you can see the full process by which Envoy is able to handle uh, data and handle network connections and get an understanding of um, the overall architecture and the overall process by which uh, Envoy does its thing. Um, so finally, just as a special thanks, uh, to Ambassador Labs, the company I work for. Um, special thanks to EnvoyCon and KubeCon, as well as Daniel Bryant, who helped me in making this presentation. Um, as a side note, quick sort of plug, uh, we are hiring, and um, there are some links for more information about Ambassador Labs. Thank you. <laughs>